Tyler. It has been years, my friend. How are you doing? Oh, Jordan. Hello. <laughs> I can't tell you how good it is to see your face. Yeah. Look at you, patchy pants. You're looking very colorful. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, okay. aided, I'm aided by some colors behind me. So, you know, mm -hmm. there's that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I'm going to try and do is speak directly into the camera as if I'm speaking to you. Otherwise, I'll just be staring down like this the entire time. That sounds good. I mean, it, it doesn't super matter. I mean, we're going to, I think we're already going to include this in the podcast. Like, let's just consider pretend it's live right now. So the viewers have, <laughs> everyone watching will have the awareness of like what's really going on here. We have a multi cam. Okay. Okay. Multi cam. Break the setup. fourth wall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smash it. <laughs> well, should we do a couple intros then? Give us a, a feeling of a flavor for the vibe. That sounds good. What do you have in mind? Well, there's this one, which I always do. Then there's this one, which isn't much different from the original one. <laughs> or I could just say hi. I think all of the above look good, so I'll just like... <laughs> yep. Hey, yep. Tyler. Hey! <laughs> way <laughs> Bay How! The reveal. <laughs> uh, way Bay How is the last house. We are now in Hello Yes. I love that. That's why your your Zoom username is Hello Yes. Yes. I thought you were. I thought that was like you were just pranking me because I sent you a message asking on Instagram. I'm like, did the Zoom link work? And then immediately after you logged in with Hello Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you greeting me or agreeing with me? I don't understand what's going on. But no, it is both. Uh, <laughs> it, is, it is. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> Hi, Jordan. Hey, Tyler. Or should I? Should oh my I call God. You? Should I be calling you Atlantis King, or is that character is that character no longer? That's well, that character will exist forever because it is just a character. Mm. So who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I remember Honestly, that initial video, which I just rewatched before we jumped on here. Of uh, this one's for the kids. Potential realities was the first mm. time I ever was introduced to you. And it like wow. struck a chord so well. And I was just like, this kid, this guy, this fucker, he's so funny. <laughs> I, I love him and I really want to meet him. And, and oh. so like, I mean, that was how we connected. I mean, I, I think you might've even mm. sent that to me or someone sent that to me if it wasn't you. Um, yeah. But very quickly. I mean, do you remember back then? Like how that all happened? Yeah, um, actually contacting you was just a small throwaway offhand thing. I had done years of NLP courses. Um, I'd started living with an NLP trainer and I discovered how to flip my own script, become whoever I wanted to be. And that was so exciting to me that I wanted to share it with the world. So I just started making these videos just for the pure fun of it. And some people got that and got the feeling that, oh, pure fun, like what's he gonna go with this? I'm like, I don't know, it's a mystery for all of us. Oh, my internet connection is unstable. Let's proceed anyway. So I had done all that and then I had made some videos because I wanted to connect with my culture and society. Am I freezing? No, nope, you're good on my end. We're good? We're good. All right. Internet issues. So I wanted to connect with my culture and society through film. And so I started doing that by um, being the young man that I was and just expressing all the ideas and thoughts that, that got me going. And um, basically, I was being the voice that I heard in my head whenever I read a beautiful script or like something amazing by some lover to another lover. You know, that, that voice inside that just goes, life, you know, just calls out for itself. And that's what I was feeling. And it was hard to explain. So I explained it with the energy. I just made these videos and then I heard about spirit science, watched all of them in one go and was like, that's amazing. <laughs> sent a video to you, Jordan, and I was just like, hey, he might be interested. You know, we're both here doing, um, we're creating things from the heart because we felt the need to, not because we felt the need to uh, feel safe, which is a big distinction. I feel like we started making films because we wanted to help people. We didn't start making films because we wanted to be successful in any way. I think we just wanted to go, do, and be exactly what we felt was true, and that was connecting with people through the internet because we're all one thing with fiber optic cable connecting us. 
<laughs> so yeah, my friend honestly told me about spirit science. Just this lady that worked down at the cafe. Jamie Medlin, the lady that um, gave us a tarot card, um, you know, the fire, earth, and air signs and all of that. That, mm. that lady. She told me about you. I sent you a video. And then you wrote back. Back in the day where you could connect with internet people. <laughs> You'd just be like, hi, I'm this person. And then they'd write back to you. Whereas these days, there's so many people doing it. That just, how do you even think about the possibility of talking to someone that's one of your YouTube stars? I mean, it it's true. Really no, we, were, we tried. We, we were both small time enough that it was easy to connect with each other and like, I think get each other's awareness. Like you had seen Spirit Science, you sent me one of your videos or I'd seen, you know, your thing. And it was mm. just like, this guy's awesome. I, I, I just want to meet this guy. And like for, for people who are listening as well, like mm. I, there's probably a lot of people tuning in who might not even know who you are. And the one frame of reference for those who have seen mm. a lot of Spirit Science um, is probably Spirit Science episode 14, The Insights of Ascension, because you mm. were reading the Celestine mm. Prophecy and we were like, let's make mm. a cartoon about it. And so yeah. there's like a whole, we recorded this together, wrote it together. And then animated, you know, both of us are Patchman and Atlantis King as like, you know, mm. cartoon characters, like explaining the insights of Ascension. Um, yeah. And that was a really fun video. That was actually like a just fabulous experience to, to create together with you. And that's um, it. We're flowing our bliss when we create these things. And so isn't it difficult where you go, oh, I'm not feeling in bliss. Is that me or is it because I'm not in flow or in line and harmony with what I'm working with? And we're just in that state constantly while traveling, weren't we? It, it's true, yeah, and then and then I guess that's that's the continuation of the story for uh, for those who are maybe more recent to the spirit science channel and stuff is like, um, you know, you and I we connected online, and then I flew out to Australia. We made a bunch of random videos mm. of like exploring Australia and having fun and stuff like that, and then uh, came back to the U.S. and we did like a road trip around the states for a while um and then went to a few festivals and or like you know just had some fun experiences together and then kind of went off and parted ways and we i don't think we've ever we've we've seen each other physically since then um but true story man like mm. i still get i mean maybe like once every month or two like i'll see a comment on youtube of someone being like hey where's atlantis king can he come back like <laughs> like people are people are missing you man <laughs> yeah, I actually got a bit of that on um, my channel because I left quite abruptly. I mean, I delivered the videos that I said that I would, but it's such a creative mayhem that like, I don't think people even noticed that I said that I was going to make 12 videos. It's just energy, feeling, like uh, inspiration, aspirations, all of that stuff. And basically, I was just trying to have the best fun that I could with it. So stopping was a choice that... Um, I was in the internet with you and we were creating a lot of good things from our perspective of happiness. But I think a lot of people, especially in Australia, thought that was incredibly naive. There's so much suffering out in this world. There's so much pain and there's so many people taking things from each other and not caring about each other. For us to have the perspective that everything's fine because I believe it is so is only at most half the story. And I felt that people felt a a need to tell me that there was some suffering that I was missing out on that I wasn't aware of. And of course, I didn't understand it because I'm a big, white, blonde haired, blue eyed, white guy. And I'm like, I'm poor. <laughs> I live in a truck. <laughs> uh, yeah, so as you can imagine, everyone thought that I just had it easy. And so I felt like I was explaining myself the whole time. And um, it kind of took away from the message of be whatever you want to be. And um, yeah, I, I didn't see any more need to continue the videos because they weren't creating anything for me it was just me creating what i wanted to what i thought was necessary for a good life for me to express and then um i finished what i said i would do and then i started looking in other areas you know how creative i am i like uh, keep on exploring and moving and journeying so i became a ship captain um, i found that important because of the life saving technology all of the stuff that we learn in class is all about how to keep people alive what is the minimum hours of rest as realized by, you know, thousands of hours of testing rather than just how you feel. So becoming a ship captain is really interesting. I can drive 24 meter vessels or 200 ton vessels in um, Europe. And um, I run boat festivals now. So I'm still in that culture of rituals because creating a film, I'm sure you're aware, you're creating a ritual. You're creating a moment where you sit down and you commune with something. 
And now that I do boat festivals, I'm trying <laughs> to bring that heart into it because there's eight catamarans, 300 people, um, eight captains, and everyone's just like wondering who's going to drown. And there's like, there's this novelty, which is the reason people come, but it's also the reason people get silly. And so I've been trying to, <laughs> what you do as an event manager is go to the people that are the problem and you make them your friend, which is such a beautiful practice from what we learned, Jordan. So anyone that was in antagonizing or calling his demons or stuff like that, because there is the internet in front of us, there's that wall, that messenger wall where we are safe. We could honestly just interact with these hateful people and um, just help them bring light into their own life. And you're still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, is this the first episode of your podcast? Hells yeah, man. I saved it just for wow. you. Oh! <laughs> Thank you, brother. I, th I thought we had, awesome. to start, we had to start Spirit Science Live with a bang. It, and th th there's no <coughs> better way. But, you know, I wanted to really... I mean, you touched on so many things there. And mm. the thing that really stuck out, stuck out to me was this, like, you know, we, we went out into the world and we were talking about love and talking about lights and freedom and happiness and... And, uh, mm. and people were just like, that's so incredibly naive and there's so much suffering, mm. like how dare you kind of thing. And mm. it's so interesting because like looking back then, I can definitely say even for myself, like, I mean, how old were you? I was, I was like 20 or maybe 21 at the time. I think I just turned 21. I think, okay, then, and we're, you're a year older than me, right? I'm 30 now. Yeah, so you're, you're so I was 20, and and I remember uh, also happy birthday whenever that was <laughs> October, right? I think November. But November. thank you, close, it's, nice. it's close, yeah. Scorpio, I just remember that. Um, hey, yo. <laughs> 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 um, I remember when I really went through my you know quote unquote spiritual awakening, um, mm -hmm. and and really just like it shifted everything for me so much that I kind of threw out from my, my mind, old perspective, like everything that I thought that I knew before about the world. Like I let go mm. of everything and I just kind of embraced, I guess what was, the only way I can describe it is it's like this like blank slate awareness. Like I really feel mm. like I was going into the world and didn't know anything and acknowledged that I didn't mm. know anything, but I knew that I wanted to talk about spirituality and transformation and finding freedom yeah. and all and love and all of these things and yeah. um and it a was like life. sorry sorry a good life yeah and and i wanted to talk about that kind of stuff and the you know the the reactions from people i feel like there's maybe a, like a lack of empathy on both sides a lack of feeling because i being so so young and on the spiritual quest like just starting the spiritual journey was was um I, like didn't have much awareness of the world. I had not spent much time mm. with people mm. outside of my the social circle that I grew up with, and then you know a little mm. bit of traveling here and there, um, mostly you know on like sp you know school trips or you know parents take mm -hmm. me to somewhere, and and so it was a learning process of connecting with people and seeing where people resonated with in life, and and mm. but that t that took a lot of time to really get to know and understand people. Um, and so I don't, I, I genuinely don't think that what we were doing was naive. We, we, we weren't necessarily mm. going in the face of people, um, and, and trying to say that their suffering or suffering in general didn't matter because we ourselves went through suffering mm. on our trip. It was mm. just that we like, we were, we were kids, you know, just like mm. trying to see and experience the world and really we're just exploring yeah. what life had to offer. Yeah. And a couple of people took advantage of you. Do you remember that early on? They're like, here, sign this document and we'll work together. Oh, <laughs> oh I own you now. Yeah, I yeah. own you. <laughs> yes. And, and yeah. that was the price that I had to pay for that naivety. Mm. Or maybe it was naive mm. in, that, in that sense, you know, because it was there was an innocence there um, mm. of not knowing and really not investigating. And mm. there's or even trusting. there's even like, you know, like recently in the last few years, um, I, I, re I like probably two years ago now, I went through a book called Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race. And you brought up that excellent point of being like, you know, a blonde hair, blue eyed white person, you know, with, who's like you know, very attractive and everything like that. Um, you, you dog, you. <laughs> um, but like, but, but that book really, like I, I had not been privy to that information before. 
Um, and, and it wasn't like I was avoiding it. It was just I n- was never introduced to it of mm. the cultural hierarchy that exists between races and classes and, and, and even sexes. And mm. being privy to that, just like it was like, oh, shit, I have to become more sensitive right now and and did. Mm. But was not even aware that that information was existed before then because I was raised in a bubble, you know, like I didn't even yeah. I didn't even know. For those that don't know, Jordan grew up in Winnipeg, which is basically a place for grass. For grass? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean like actual grass that grows out of the ground, not not weed. Well, I uh, mean, no, it's it's that too now. After 2018, it's it's very much weedville. Like, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Canada legalized cannabis. Oh, wow. Good on them. Australia's still behind the eight ball. We're very slow adopters. We like everyone else to That's burn right. themselves on the acid before we touch well, it. It's, it. You know, it's the same thing with, with like America is it's still very illegal everywhere except like California, Washington, Oregon, and Colorado. But Colorado, they, fuck, they just decriminalize mushrooms. I heard. Isn't that amazing? But That's, they're using it for scientific trials. Well, yeah, yeah, but but I mean, it's decriminalized. Like, it, you can't really get caught with it and get in trouble. It's just sort of like, well, don't you know, don't run around in the middle of the street and do that. I, I, there's probably some details yeah, of the le- of legislature. I don't know, but yeah. Mm. Mm. Apparently, yeah. trials are starting here too in Australia, but just very lightly and very quietly. Of course. Um, but movement, like we thought, the military-industrial complex would never release its grip on things to do with self-awakening and you know any kind of psychic nature of things yeah. well know, we, i think we would have thought that that yeah sorry I stopped with the men who stayed at goats you know we did men who stayed at goats and then we're like all right that's not gonna work but but yeah. now people are taking mushrooms because of the enhancing factors that it has i think there's a i think there's a push from the sort of the therapeutic scientific education movement about mushrooms and stuff mm-hmm. and uh, and, and other psychedelics that like they really mm. want to see it be heavily controlled exclusively for therapeutic use kind of thing. Like like mm. psychologists can work with you with mushrooms under a very controlled setting and they can get it legally. Mm-hmm. And there's there's that mm. energy. But I feel like where it's I mean, where it's going to go, it, it's it's going to have to we're as a species going to have to just like wake up a little bit to our you know intuitive psychic psychedelic nature of like what happens you know where you go with that but like the Mm. the more generations that kind of go through this i think it's gonna it it has no choice but to open up and then the question is really how are we using it because Mm. it 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 is a very powerful tool for uh both therapeutic and spiritual uses but also as we've you know experienced and everything it can also be used uh for like as a party drug or to um you know just I mean, it can it can really send you down a bad trip if you're not in the right set or setting, uh, and the substance if it's not clean or if it's not made right, you know, if it's LSD or something like that. Um, the, all of those are factors, and so there's. I mean, mm. it's a very interesting conversation. I think we're probably slowly getting there, but um, well, I mean, one day at a time, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, what are you doing with your time now these days? Oh, dude, my life is so busy. <laughs> That's a big question. Um, my life, yeah, my life is being very busy. Like um, in the last year, well, it was about a year ago, um, I went to Rhythmia and I definitely want to get you out there. I don't know if you've seen our ayahuasca movie, um, but uh, we, we went. No. So we went, uh, me and my friend John. Wait, did you ever meet John? John Watts? I don't know if you did. He's got a good last name. He does, yes. Um, so either way, my, my, he's like an old friend from like elementary school. And he and I went to Rhythmia in Costa Rica and we did the plant medicine ceremonies there. But we also like interviewed each other and other people on the journey mm. and then, um, you know, asked. Yeah, just asked people like, what did you experience? And then they were like, oh, I was I became a, a creature and I became one with everything. And then I became this and that mm. and I experienced this and transformation and all these things. And then we, I, you know, I had an animation team in Winnipeg at the time, and we actually fully animated these journeys. So we have like a sort of an animated ayahuasca oh. experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. Wow, um, like Midnight Gospel on. Um... 
Yes. You, you yeah, that? it was. Yeah. It, oh, dude, that Fuck is yeah. quite a show. That is very quite a show. We should. We, we if we yeah. animate if we animate this podcast, yeah. we can replicate Midnight Gospel. Um, <laughs> that's amazing. Seriously. And then tag them. Be like, we love you. I love you so much. <laughs> yeah. Well, if uh, yeah, if those guys are listening, you know, we we love your work. Um, but mm. uh, the 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 whole reason I'm telling you this is because during that ceremony, I had this vision from Thoth. Uh, he was kind of there like every night, you know, Atlantean. The real king Ooh. of Atlantis, if you will. <laughs> no offense. Now, when you say that, do you say that with uh, my imagination said that to me or our collective imagination said that to me or he was physically there? Well, I, it wasn't physical, but it was, there, there's no, I, I feel like, a, I feel very strongly that there's no way that that was just my imagination. There was, there was too much. Mm. Just and it was so vivid, so mm. present, so real. It was like you know when Drimbolo describes like mm. he appeared to me and we worked through stuff. I'm like that is exactly what it felt like. Um, and so okay. after that experience, and we can talk more about that, like what that means too, and if that's real or if it's inside of our heads or whatever, because that's a whole conversation I would love to have with you. Um, but but basically from that experience, I was left mm. with this inspiration to create a mystery school. And, uh, and Spirit Mysteries was born uh, several months later. I was guided to another mentor who helped me in like, like learning how to do it, um, how to set up this sort of like online school kind of thing. And, um, and now Spirit Studios is like, I actually live in the mountains in, in Western Canada. Uh, I'm not in mm. Winnipeg anymore. And mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I run a, a large team of people, probably between 20, 25 people, uh, all over the all over the world and just like different components we have a little animation team video editing crew mm -hmm. social media people running podcasts setting up you know social like just content making content mm. and articles and uh everything like that so uh, <laughs> the last few weeks have been especially bus busy just going from like meeting to podcast to interview to this mm. to that like just this continual mm. stream of uh, just very busy and I'm looking to you know be able to delegate more things um, to mm. my team and to you know and, and to finding the right people so that I can work at a greater level and still stay creative because I'm mm. finding like there's always this this journey of um, taking on more responsibility and setting things up and then being able to hand them off and I'm kind of I mm. think in the middle of slash at the end of this another wave of taking on a lot of stuff having exceptionally full time and being like, guys, I'm burnt out. Who can handle A, B, C, and D? And then working with the team to kind of hand things off. So things are really growing in that sense. And that's, I mean, that's pretty much how I spend my time. That sounds amazing, Jordan. Do you know how much I'm loving just being in your energy again right now? It's been nearly a full on decade. It, uh, maybe <laughs> not a full you decade, like seven explain years. Explain how like, you're taking it. Oh. Yeah. Okay, that's close to a full yeah. decade. That's fair. Nearly there. Yeah. It's I love how you're speaking about taking on more responsibility because that is um, a role of the masculine, isn't it? To take on what you can handle. And then um, even creating boundaries, which I usually hated doing because I'm like so creative and open and free. I want to flow. I want to not be in any kind of box. But as soon as people start being leaky and like taking your energy and leaking their energy out and they're just demanding more of you, you realize you need to set a boundary. And um, we could talk about that for as long as we want as well, I suppose, setting boundaries. But that's not what we're here for. I'm here to connect with you, Jordan, and to see what you're up to. I'm going to watch your movie. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, dude, this is, this is really the thing is uh, we can talk about all of this shit. Like, this is great because that's the nature of the podcast. I mean, we can just we can go in any direction. And I, I mean, just likewise, we just want to express, dude, I'm like so happy to be reconnecting with you. So like, thank you. This is great. Um, but like, I mean, honestly, there's honestly there's this uh, there's a conversation that we've been having within Spirit Mysteries inside of the, the mystery school. Um, mm. That's the conversation. It was like a whole related to the last uh, full moon workshop, maybe a new moon workshop. Uh, no, it was a full moon mm -hmm. workshop in Capricorn, and it was like being aware of the difference between unconditional love and conditional love, and like asking mm. like. Where's that boundary? Because we have in mm. in the new age circles, there's often that conversation of like, well, unconditional love is the is the only thing that we have to do. But then main there, operating principle. Sorry, say it again. Main operating principle. Main operating principle. And I, I 
really fully agree with that. But at the same time, if we consider that everything is energy and everything is part of this universal field of love, then there's certain things in, especially, I find it especially relates to the physical dimension, that there is a time and a place for mm -hmm. conditional love. And one of the, one of the things mm -hmm. is, like in the exchange mm -hmm. of energy in the form of money, uh, what I've been learning with my team is being able mm -hmm. to say, listen, yes, I'd love to pay you to work on this animation or this project. Uh, I need you to be able to do that work, right? And so the condition is that you do the work. And so mm -hmm. it's like we have this higher awareness of unconditional love, but there's also some conditions upon the nature mm -hmm. of the agreement. And we just factor in, we pretend or not pretend, but we act as though the money that we're exchanging Absolutely. is also a representation of love as well. Mm. Yeah. So it's so it's like there's Absolutely. a time and a place and the unconditional love or the, the conditional love seems to relate a little bit more to physical exchanges, you know, buying things, commerce, mm. trading, trading energy and time mm. and, and stuff like that. Mm. So I don't know, just wanted to share that. Yeah, giving and taking. Absolutely. Well, that's what we're really talking about, isn't it, Jordan? The fact that we, as such naive young children, chose to engage with this reality in such a powerful way that it took on a message from many other people that felt just like us. Like so many people felt kindred to you and me because we're these little naive children running around going, ah! <laughs> and people are like, oh, I wish I could do that. And then what do we get? Thousands of messages saying, how do you do it? How do you do it? How do you do it? We're like, we don't know. We don't. We do. That was, trust. I mean, most people I don't. I think it's interesting. Oh, <laughs> no, no, please go for it. No, you, please. Oh, okay. Oh, well, you stop it. Well, you. Oh, no, stop it. No, no, no. <laughs> I will uh, go. <laughs> Um, so uh, I wanted to tell you how interesting it was that in the same time of our lives, without any interaction whatsoever, I must say, without any agreements, prior, without any agreements previously being made, you and me have both started making media in a medicinal purpose. I have a podcast studio up there. It's where I can sit down for people and interview any interesting person that I want. I can get any scientist in and we can talk about any subject and she, can, she or he can sit in that room up there and we can interview them and get the best lessons. We can embrace our naivety and say, hey, I don't know this, but I know who does. And I know how to get that information and I can do that in a loving way. So I can keep my main operating principle of just being who I am, loving, open, connected, creative, and there supporting someone else's um, wisdom, supporting their dreams, supporting their vision. Anyone that has a mission that is about helping people, I want to get them in the podcast studio. Anyone that's a scientist and we're like, right, what's the problem today? What's the biggest problem? Let's go ask a scientist and how can we en masse help in a small way towards that problem today? And then that'll just be flowing every week. We'll call them learning adventures. And it's exactly, it's an antithesis. It's a tiny little piece of what you and me did way back when. It's leaning on our edge of awareness and understanding collecting the information from the right people wherever it is and then turning that into media and producing it out there to the world so that people have to do less learning. It's like watching it's like watching a video from someone that you really enjoy watching because they deliver the information quickly. Much like um, Patch, remember how you sped up the voice just a little bit? People actually love being in that trance where it's just absorbing information and each piece builds on the last piece. Yeah, And um, I think with media, we have such an ability to put these things online once and then it just stays there forever. When we die, it's going to be in the exact same form that it was. And like, we are essentially doing God's work here, John, but not the uh, Roman Christian God. <laughs> <laughs> the divine, <laughs> the colorful divine, shall we call it. So I just, okay, this is not intended to be like a long, I don't need a long-winded answer for this one, but I'm just so curious. If you have a podcast studio, why aren't you recording that in there? <laughs> it's much better in the photography space. Are you kidding me? Yeah, there's uh, an office up there and like computer stuff in the background. We'll be there next time. How's that? We've also got a music room up this side. I use a machine with native instruments. We've got a huge PA and uh, we're, once Coven is over, we're going to be... Um, so we'll be playing down at a surf club by the beach here, but that will be practiced to play for festivals because I have a geodesic dome. It's 150. Um, let me start again. I have a geodome and it's 78 square meters of floor space down the bottom. And so you can fit about 150 people there. And um, I've been taking it to my 
brother's events. He is drumming events. It's all drug and alcohol free. And you know that I don't care either way, but drug and alcohol free is really such a beautiful experience to be had because everyone does what they would do if they were living in freedom. If they were actually in heaven now, what would you be doing? And that question is so goddamn valuable because <laughs> we're not asked it at any point. When you sat in the middle of a field with 200 strangers and say, what would you like to do with all of your time? I was asked that question and I ran a archery group. We all just went out into the bush and <laughs> they found a hill somewhere and then we all talked about the Zen and the art of archery. So it's not about trying to hit the target. It's about taking the time to be of the not mind. We are not there and it's not you taking the shot. And that just one little piece of practice can be the chink that, that opens up for someone to allow letting the light in you know they get over the boundary of their ego personalities and you and me have decided to do it completely independently <laughs> and at um, the same times in our life it's mind-boggling it's honestly crazy hmm. you, that's amazing you're good so wait your good value you... <laughs> freaking love you brother um so are you saying that and i, I, I just, just just for the clarity's sake are you saying that you are currently drug and alcohol free Wow, for how long? Well, this morning, absolutely. <laughs> I didn't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I was baked and wasted. Nice last clarification. Night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wee! Um, now this was a festival, so it's called Castle oh, okay, Tribe. Okay, my okay. brother runs it, and um, my brother is disabled, so he has a lot of people that um, want to come and care, but then because he's actually filled up and knows who he is, they realize that they are trying to care for someone to try and distract from the own work that they need to do. It's honestly the most beautiful thing I've been a part of is being a part of these festivals, these gatherings, these meeting pools of minds where yeah. all we need is each other. That's what I've been really noticing recently is all we need is each other. Once I left doing the internet stuff, I was like, fuck, what do we need for a good life? We need good nutrients. So that's food and water. Then we need good people. And then we just need a relatively, you know, not taxing, not damaging work that we can do. We don't want to be swinging axes all day because we might fucking chop their legs off. And that's not conducive forever. And so my dream, my full goal that I'm going to express to you now, Jordan, but that I'm going to also express as soon as we launch our website, um, is that we can create a template society, just like actually the Celestine Prophecy. Remember how it developed and went on? I was talking about, let's create a template society. Each person holds the wisdom for a different area and we come together for greater good. And so, uh, with the world suffering as it is right now, and all the profiteering going way, way, way too high up into these nether realms, into these businesses that don't give back to the societies from which they came, because all of that's happening, I think it really is time for us to get focused on what do we need in order to live a good life. And all we need is good nutrients and good people and a good place to do that in. And so, my mission now uh, with my brother is to purchase a land either through festivals or through our own means, and then use that land to create the template society for what we would wish to be all over the world. So we have all of the learnings and lessons and lovings brought in from all the people that understand the best in their field, and we'll be using internet to bring in the best lessons. You know, you get one psychoanalyst giving you a course, and then you get another one, and then they build upon the lessons. And after three or four of those, you've got a really good thing to start showing some teenagers when they grow into adulthood. And each culture would have their own different way of doing it. You know, there'll be our rules here in Australia, of course, they still follow federal rules, but then there'll be over in Spain, there'll be someone doing something different, but it'd be similar because you'd have the earth ships, you'd have the technology, you'd have the people, and you'd have the um, information about how to get the good nutrients, how to get good, clean, fresh water, how to get good, clean food from the ground, full of B12s and all those micronutrients and all that stuff. So that's my goal right now is creating a good life for myself and being able to share that with others. That's really precious. I think that's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I don't think that there's a, like I've, I've recorded a few other podcasts, although we're posting yours mm -hmm. first, but uh, in those podcasts, I don't think there's a single one that's gone by where I haven't mentioned this. So it's, it's, it's funny to me that's coming up again. Uh, but good. like the biology of belief with Bru from Bruce Lipton, like, are you familiar mm -hmm. with his work? I th believe I'm familiar with his work, but not with him. Got it. Yeah. So this mm. is what, what's really interesting is that only recently did I hear him mentioning 
the, the same thing that you talked about in your first video that I ever saw with like the, you know, 7 million bits, two plus or minus bits of information. I, uh, I heard that in like his audiobook or something. And I was like, yeah. wait a second. Was this, <laughs> does Ty, was this based on, was Tyler's work based on biology belief all along? Like, and I, I only just, you know, I'm like catching up now. Um, mm, but, mm. Uh, uh, you know, what he talks about really is how our decisions, our behavior, our belief systems, everything, everything about us really comes from the environment, including, uh, you know, how, what we eat and what we, you know, how we think, how we feel all mm. affects us in our way of thinking. So like what you're talking about of like providing nourishment, um, mm. and like good land, good soil, good food, good energy. Mm. Right. It's like, it's all a factor of like, you just make the space. And people who go there feel fulfilled. They feel nourished mm. because it's good mm. vibes. And like the problem mm. with problems with the world really stem from how the the environment is so negative, so nasty, so disconnected. Right? We pour concrete over the earth. We lose our mm. con connection with the planet. We lose our. You know, there's a whole earthing movement of like that when you're physically on the ground, uh, not with the rubber soles of, but like just barefoot or just sitting on the grass or something like you actually yeah. are filled with an electromagnetic energy from the earth that you don't get yeah. otherwise if you have Absolutely. something on the, you know, in between. And yeah. uh, just all of that kind of stuff is like so critically needed. Um, just, just reconnecting ourselves with nature, with our, you know, with, with our souls, with each other. And like the space that you're wanting to create is just, I think just so beautiful because it fulfills that vision. Uh, lovely, you know, in, in a lovely sort of way. And everyone gets their own style of their community. Mm -hmm. And so can you imagine when we were traveling, we're like, oh, shit, we need to make some friends in the hope that we can stay with them. But if we had earth ships all over the world, these spirit soldier centers that people could come in, you'd stay and then you would have your work allocated. So, you'd know, you know, the give and take, you'd be like, I'm the intern. I come and I wash the dishes and I chop the wood and it'd be clear. And I remember you talking about, this is really exciting, when you'd have the, everything on an iPad. So you'd go into the, the cabbages era and then you'd be like, sign in for the cabbages. And then you'd spend the day tending to cabbages and you'd do 10 of them. And then, of course, you'd level up just like a video game, but you'd become the manager and then you'd have more options. And then you really would be master of your own destiny within the community. There wouldn't be any walls up. Wherever you invested your time was where you could become a master. And I loved that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's we... Um, I have a vision of one, of working towards building like a large uh, pyramid spirit, uh, spirit center, um, probably in BC somewhere in the next couple of years, uh, or that's my goal is to have that being able to be fulfilled in the next couple of years. And uh, it's, it, I mean, it's exactly kind of the same thing that you described, like this, this, you know, communal environment, um, but also one that produces and provides a lot of value for the world so that people can come there and just sort of experience it. Um, but also people could come and participate in it if that's what they're called to do. Yeah. yeah. And it's all about the experience of living our lives now. Like that's the one true truth. There's no religion. There's no, no dogma. Everyone gets to believe whatever they want to believe as long as it doesn't hurt anyone. And we just come together to be good people and to learn about technology in a space. Yeah. We can it's become really, space people. It's really, it's, I mean... It seems as though we have the potential to be really like on the, like the I mean, there's like a, the, the front lines of a massive shift for everything and things are changing mm. regardless, you know, COVID and mm -hmm. like big world changes and conspiracies mm. and everything like that. And I guess the question is mm. like change is inevitable. So where are we going to be participating in the change? And if we're not participating, are we being thrown about by the change? And, Absolutely. you know, that's really a choice that each of us have to make individually. Absolutely. How adaptable are you mm. to change? Because yeah. it wasn't the strongest that survives. It's the most adaptable. Yeah. Well, this was, I mean, this mm. was a huge thing for me uh, this past year, because after the whole ayahuasca Thoth vision experience, I felt mm. very called to have to like really check myself and my relationship with money and with resources. Because I was like, look, if you're really serious about building a giant spirit center, what do you think that's just going to come out mm. of the ground? Like you're going to have to pay for it, you know, <laughs> and yeah, or yeah, someone's yeah. going to have to pay for it. But if you if you find mm. an investor, then they're going to be the ones who really own it and have that control. Mm. And I'm like, I also don't mm. want I don't necessarily want, you know, to make something mm. that then I just, you know, it just becomes some other some soulless vessel kind of existing mm. in the world. So I, I really went down that rabbit hole of 
changing my relationship with money. And I, I think it's very interesting that you brought up like the, you know, people asking us, how do we, how did you do it? How do you travel around? And, and we're like, we don't know. And that's really the truth because uh, it like, I mean, I racked up a $3,000 credit card that's how we did it. I mean, I mean and then but like there's nothing for the time that we were away. We were looked after by so many people. It's super true. No, I mean, that's and that's so I, the, the community energy was really um, mm. it was just like it was just like, you know, there were times where we were called to invest, but we didn't, you know, like paying for gas or whatever. Right. And that was the thing of like we mm. just racked up debt. But as far as and there were some people who donated and that like helped us get by at times mm. and then there was really i mean the, the thing was mm. that what you just described right of like people letting us stay with them and that was really mm. special like and and there's got to be something to be mm. said about that for um i mean if if we have community then we take care of each mm. other and that's yeah. something that i think we all need to learn because there's a lack of trust in the world that keeps us um very isolated from each other oh. absolutely yeah, the trust that we can take care of each other is like rightfully, I think, being brought into question because now we realize with this amount of people, you can't trust everyone. But being able to in those moments should be treated as divine, as it truly is. We're here helping each other. We understand we want the same thing. We are the same thing. Yeah. Mm. Maybe we should do it again. We should do a around the world trip. I would love to. <laughs> Except uh, we've got to make it sustainable somehow. I guess the moment that, I mean, <laughs> we, I mean, we can, we could definitely do events. We could do like speaking events mm -hmm. and then it becomes, well, we'll do a poll and we'll see what the people want. Cause you don't want to give them what they don't want unless it's truly what you want to be giving. I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's, I don't know, man, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot to discuss there about how and, and, and what you mm. want to do and how you do it and everything like that. But, um, mm. I don't know. I, I think I think we could probably have a lot of fun um, and really meet a lot of special people uh, mm. doing like a world tour. I know that I would love to. The moment that the planes are open again, you know, once COVID. Is, <laughs> so yeah. it'll be like 2022. <laughs> we'll, we'll yeah, re yeah, yeah, exactly. Re revisit this conversation. Well, we can use this time to get really well planned. Um, I just spent the last 12 weeks at sea. Perhaps this can have some lessons for us. And I right. just spent that time making music and doing mind maps. Yeah, you can see the adventures on hashtag escape into isolation or um, the barefoot captain on YouTube. That's my cousin, Dean Krupp, and we go away each year sailing to all these remote locations and see what we can find and, and visit all these shipwrecks that his dad found and he's quite famous for. And um, while being out at sea for 12 weeks, you're in a blue desert. There's nothing there. There's just you and your boat and you're reduced to whatever you brought on board for that time. And the imagination just goes. And in that, I was thinking of everything that I want to do with this place. Hello, yes. And so I thought of all the ways that it can move forward to this progression of media. And then I put them all into a schedule. And now look at me. I don't look like I'm a man that writes schedules. <laughs> and I found a deep love for being able to plan out the perfect day for me every day how I want to wake up, how I want to spend my day, the things that I want to do that balance each other. So music and then working out and then doing motorcycle maintenance and then doing some yoga, all those things, just fitting them all in right in, up until eight o'clock at night. And then from eight to 12, it's just enjoy, just love, just go. And I'm loving being in a schedule right now. How about yourself? Are you being more free flow? Or you, you've always been quite specific and well organized. So is that still the same? I don't know if, I don't know if that's true. I mean, mm. generally speaking, I feel like I, if I have something that I want to be doing, then I'll just focus on that and get it done. You know, it's like there's a video I'm mm. making. I'm just like, I, that's what I'm doing. Mm. Um, but as far as making schedules go, this has really been big for me in the last year of like planning more of like meetings and when I'm working on what. And there's some po pl positives to that. And then there's also some things that I don't like about that. So I try and have a balance between mm. the two where like mm. meetings are scheduled. And so I have a very meticulous, like I've got, uh, you know, a 9 a.m. meeting, a 10, 30, 11, 12, mm. <laughs> and, you know, meetings throughout the day or whatever. And then I'll just leave like, you know, three, four, five hours open where I can. Mm. Um, and that's like when yeah. I'm working, that's like, okay, that's video time. I'm working on a new video, a new project yeah. with the t animation team or whatever um, and getting things ready mm. to be published. 
So it's, I, I try and keep it, a, I try, I really try and keep it balanced because otherwise I go crazy. If I'm like, I have to have everything meticulously planned forever. It's just, it's not yeah. a good, it's not a good fit for me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. You found a balance in that. Yeah. Yeah. But how is that working for you? Cause you're now you're becoming a schedule master. Ooh, yeah. uh, it's good. Cause I'm so good at just enjoying myself and watching the time just fly by. Um, that it's really good to have, um, I wear a watch now <laughs> that I didn't do before. Cause as a captain, you need to know the time very specifically for coming into wolves and stuff like that. And I've set myself two hour blocks and it's just so it's what's it called when it's exponential. I've seen myself on time. I see myself, I've completed the things I've wanted to do for that day, for that segment. I've just gained time because I've been in flow rather than allow my flow to take me out of time because I just stay there not knowing where the next thing is. Knowing where to leap from, almost like leapfrogging one creative endeavor to the next mundane one so that you want to be in that space. If I want to be in a chair for three hours, I want to go do some exercise first. So I just want to flop in that chair and use my, my prefrontal cortex instead of my muscles. Yeah, definitely. Well, I and mm. I remember watching the first episode of your uh, show. I don't know. Can we call it a show? Your your series, <laughs> your web series. I the guess. art series. Web series. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Um, and like you were out on the boat, and then something broke, and then you like spent like the whole episode basically. It was just like seeing if you could hopefully fix it so that you wouldn't be stranded at sea for the rest of your short lives. <laughs> ah. Wait, so this is Escape into Isolation, not Atlantis King? Oh, correct. Yeah, 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 yeah no, referring to the boat, <laughs> the boat series, yeah. I think we're calling it a docu-reality series. It was fun. Because we're actually, yeah. It was scary. Oh, I mean, and, um, I yes, was like... Things break all the time. Are they going to be okay? You know, like... <laughs> <laughs> it's known as Jeopardy in the business, Jordan. We must create it. Or they need some drama of people doing stuff and we don't like having people have drama because we like to keep everyone happy so we, rather the boat breaks and it does all the time so that's great <laughs> well i mean there's there's quite a bit of drama in the world anyways right now isn't there so oh, i mean exactly. no matter no matter what you put out on the internet like there's there's drama absolutely there's, there's no like even now without without positivity and not really focusing on the problems of the world, some people are probably going to feel like we're not properly addressing them and they'll feel the need to be seen by commenting on that. And all of that's just people trying to be seen. So I think you and me have entered into a space where, where we know that we could be seen. We have more of a relaxed nature with what we want to create. And we know that what we create is going to be under such strong scrutiny that we may as well put the time in making sure that we do the right references making sure that we don't say something out of tone or say something that can be taken out of tone or on the rest of it i mean i feel like i'm so I excited like no, to show you my music i'm ex i mean you're making music now yeah mostly electronic i still do go for live and acoustic a bunch of times but i'm making um musics because i have two 13 part series um, the first one teaches us about self-development, all the things I learned through the seminars, doing the courses, living with the trailers, all of the immediate things that worked quickly and it, like all over, just like made me a new person so that I could make new decisions in my life. And then the second one is how to hypnotize yourself. So these are all the tenets and the traits. And of course, we are being hypnotized in the first one, though not as much. In the first one, um, the very first meditation we do is the heart meditation. It's how to feel good on command. If we can all do just that, <laughs> like fuck the rest of the courses. If we can feel present and love in our hearts, if we can actually do that one thing in that first video, then all the rest is just a beautiful game to engage with and to go in the roller coaster of life up and down these beautiful spirals. And yet there are much more videos. So the music that I've been making wall stars away on the boat. So there's lots of boat sounds in it. There's sails flapping in the background. There's dolphins, there's birds, there's um, the sound of the water rushing around the hull, stuff like that. So it's really transporting. And they're meditations and they vary in length. But so in the first series, it'll be about how to develop the self. And the second series will be about, be about how to develop the hypnotist within you so that you can tell yourself how you want to be and you can come out the other end exactly how you would consciously like to be. You consciously choose your unconscious processes. 
and that it was so powerful for me that I have to share it. I have to give it out there because I went out that first time and said, look what I know. And people were just like, you know nothing. I'm like, ooh, okay, I need to prove that I know. I need to teach. <laughs> and it's so good to learn for yourself by teaching, of course, as well. And that's where I want to lean on my edge. That's what I want to constantly keep learning about is self-development, hypnotism, and then good nutrients, good food, good space. Beautiful. So that's how my music inter intersects with the mission. <laughs> no, that's really... <laughs> <laughs> Filters. <laughs> Filters. <laughs> um, no, I think, that's really, I think that's really cool and very inspiring for, for people to be able to see, like, if there's one or two things or a, a handful of things that you like doing, it's like, is there a way that you can kind of weave them together mm. to, to, into something rather than you know just be like oh i can only do one of these and so my other dreams have to go fall by the wayside it's like well can you can you fit them together somehow and it seems like you're really yeah. striving to do that and that's a really cool thing it is difficult because everyone tells you you've got to specialize and focus on one thing and if you look back in history all of the great architects there were other things as well like you look at the the um CV of the ancient Romans, they all did heaps of stuff. All the Spartans were encouraged to do music and um, learn about mathematics as well as swinging a sword. You know, we, we're a human being. We're a replication of the universe. And so all of the complexity of the universe is there. And then we get our older guides, like teachers and parents, saying specialize, become a colonoscopist. <laughs> like, what? Just that one thing, but I am everything. I'm like, yes, but we need people that specialize, don't you know? And I'm not sure if that's so true anymore because what became important is computers. And computers can specialize. They just can't do the motor tasks yet. We've got little tiny hand movements. That's what they need us for. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I, I mean, well said, I think. Like, just, it's really up to each of us to, you know, to, to, to make that life for ourselves, whatever we want it to be. Mm. Um, mm. And following in the, the, you know, the mainstream thinking, like, yes, people can choose to do the one thing really well. Uh, mm. Maybe there's a few things that you can be good at. And it's really, I think, probably identifying your passions, right? Like where mm. you can fit. And sometimes, like, you know, even for me, like there were times that I had to do things that I didn't necessarily like in order to achieve the goal. So there was like, you know, it's like, like you're saying, like doing the mundane work just as much as doing the other work. It's, it's all mm. kind of a test, you know, like I love making cartoons. Mm. I had to build some websites at some point, you know, but like I did it because it needed to get done for mm. the bigger picture, which I was very mm. about, which was seeing spirit science, you know, become a bigger thing, like having an animation team and all, all that kind of thing. So there's, there, there's a lot of steps. Like we, we're a lot more diverse than we think. Like you can learn something, even if you feel like, Oh, I don't know how to make a website. I don't know how to do a programming or I don't know how to change a tire. It was like, well, any one of those things you can learn if you just apply yourself to the learning process. And, you know, it's like we've, we've been, we've done a we've had a little disservice done to us by like the education system, not knocking teachers or anything, but the system itself is kind of designed to make learning not very fun. So people get out of school and they're like, eh, I don't really want to ever have to learn anything again and we resign ourselves to yeah. a, a life of limitation instead of all of the possibilities yeah. that could happen if we just yeah. engaged you know yeah yeah oh there's a beautiful line that i thought of while you're talking it was something and now it's gone <laughs> <laughs> I think there's something about breaking down the muscle for it to repair. You need to go into those hard times. You need to tear the muscle fibers before they can heal and become stronger. Mm. But there was more there. I just like listening to you. You Maybe. still making videos? Apart oh, yeah. from the uh, ayahuasca one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're posting between two and three videos a week. Um, I have two and a half animators on staff and oh, wow. three video editors we're doing a series called Hidden Spirituality where we talk about... The these, movies. Yeah, we talk about movies and games yeah. and TV shows in um, <laughs> and the, all the hidden symbolism in there. And, yeah. and then we have either parables or skits, you know, like little short, fun things. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and then the main spirit science episodes. And we're, 
we're kind of moving i'm moving back away from doing the movies like you know the human history movie yeah. blew up so big and i was like oh that's i should do we should do more parts mm. so like after that we did mm. the crystals the light series um the money series and we have a science series now where it's like part one part two part three part four and then the sumerian epic of course but like i'm kind of just like shifting my my mindset of going like let's go back yes. to how it was of just like episode one done Mm-hmm. episode two done episode three two. so now mm-hmm. we have we have a episode 40 coming out on monday which is like the big 4-0 i guess um and that one's going to be about near-death experiences and it's just like a single episode and we're kind of doing that moving forward so it's about like cleaning up the last movies kind of calling them mm. complete and then yeah. just going to the single episodes again because i think that that's probably just better in the long run yeah but yes making videos yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry that I didn't uh, know more about what you're making these days. I know that there's so many spirit science channels out there and there was like pieces from here and there and this one's official. And I was like, where's Jordan? Where's him? Because he makes the good ten- content. Because Jordan <laughs> makes the good content because Jordan fucking cares. <laughs> Am I allowed to swear? Should I not be swearing? I, I already, can, I've swore we'll get it several times. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, you know, I mean, you were you were kind of a part of and I know some people might not be aware of the whole drama, but for those who have been around for a while, like you were kind mm. of privy to, um, slightly behind the scenes, I guess, on what happened when I kind of lost ownership of the Spirit Science Facebook page, Instagram, yeah. website, you know, like yeah. that was a big deal. And I think it was from that, that that yeah. was kind of this severing. Uh, and since then, Spirit Science really dropped in terms of like the algorithm, who's watching it, who's tuning in. And so we've been like mm. striving to rebuild that. Uh, and, and, and that was yeah. like, I think that's really just my karma. Like I, I fully a- acknowledge the responsibility that I played in, in all of that, that story a- mm. as naive as I was or whatever, you know, like the parts that I played, like mm. I, you know, have to, to own that. And, um, but the thing is, is like my work's not done, you know, spirit science still has to grow. So it's just about like replanting the seeds, fixing and healing the things that I can and moving mm. things forward where yeah. where I can, yeah. I noticed that in that little bit of a pause, the main difference was that instead of worthwhile content that might lead you towards some sort of poignant moment, which is what we were providing before, it was just clickbait. And we're like, oh, that's interesting. Okay, it must be important to get money right now. Then I heard that you weren't even <laughs> running the page back then. So I'm glad to hear you're back in the seat. So. Yeah, I mean, when we got the page back, I was mm. looking at the like the posting history and it was like there were like 17 posts in one minute like scheduled in one minute and it was all just like really spammy stuff and the like looking at the looking at the algorithm of like Mm. the reach and likes of the page it was like Like, and this was like Mm. this is when i left and it just and it just tanked (laughs) and i i i mean yeah. It, it was it was yeah. just a it was a disaster. Like the even the, the the Spirit Science Facebook page right now is still suffering from it. Like we're we're, we're still uh actually mm. just um it's just not in a really good healthy state. And so um there's I mean there's conversations. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. I'm talking to people and we're just like is there anything we can do about this? I mean yeah, but the 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 bottom line for me is just like making quality content. And I, I got to that point where mm. I was doing I was carrying a lot and there was no way I could meet the demand of the output and do all of the things that I wanted to do without getting help. And so I shifted into this sort of higher yeah. mindset of, can we get an animation team? Can we get uh, some editors mm. and a writer? And can I, can I co- like collaborate with them? Can I work with them on these, these projects? And the answer is yes. I, we yeah. have like a really special team mm-hmm. right now and I'm really grateful for them. Mm. Yeah. That's so lovely. My heart is bursting. I'm throbbing. <laughs> I can't wait to come see it. I just yeah, bust dude. in the door one day. I'm like, woo! I, I don't know if I don't know if you can like maybe like later on this year if the flights open up. It depends on what happens with COVID. But uh, maybe uh, I'm in the mountains now. Maybe you can come skiing or snowboarding. Ooh. Would that be a place to hold a gathering? Potentially, yeah. Actually, we're talking maybe about it with Spirit ritual. Mysteries. It, we're talking about mm. that with Spirit Mysteries. We want to be able to invite all of the Spirit Mysteries initiates all together and like get like some yeah. you know big farm that just we can rent for a, a while or something, some big open space, 
yeah. then just have like a big gathering, play some music, have a bonfire. Cannabis is legal, so we can all get high if we want to. Completely <laughs> user's choice, you know? <laughs> but we come together because we want to. And yes. because we and are together, we have such a power. And that's what the for internet the is for. And no one's using it properly yet. <laughs> for the evolution of consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. No, 100%. I would love to. That'd mm. be great. Mm. So, I mean, and that, you know, that would like, that would get a lot of people really excited. Be like, the Atlantis King mm. live in person. <laughs> What do you think? Should we go back to that character? I mean, we, I could, if we do that, I'll need to constantly, every time that we explain what the whole thing's about, what the King of Atlantis actually represents. Or I could just go through a billion other characters and people just accept it as one of those many characters. Because here, that's what I'll be doing. I'll just be doing character, character, character. You won't know who I am. I'll come, I'll revisit some, but it'll mostly be confusing. <laughs> so that you're just stretched I mean, out of your concept of who you were. Both sound equally good. I mean, w as far as the first mm. one goes, instead of having to explain it over and over, I mean, why don't you just make mm. one one video if you don't already have one that's just like, who is mm. the Atlantis King? And then you just like <laughs> talk about it. Or I mean, you could just explain it right here and then we just reference. People ask, what's the deal? You'd just be like, go watch Spirit Science Live episode one, you know? Oh, I like it. Makes it easy. More free flowing. Yeah. Jordan, we're hatching some plans. Sorry, what? yeah, we are hatching a plan. I'd like to point out, I'm speaking close to this nice condenser microphone, and so I get really quiet when I get close to it. But you can't hear me, can you? It's I, quiet down there. <laughs> it's not. Even when you're whispering, I can still... It, it took me a second the last time oh, you said sorry. hatching a plan, but I did figure it out. It just took me a second. <laughs> sorry for yelling at you then. That's a little departure. That's fine. We're back I'm, on track. We're I'm back receiving back. it with love. With an mm. open heart, because I see, I feel your intention, and you're not mad at me. Mm. No, <laughs> couldn't possibly be mad at you, Jordan. I can't tell you how good it is to see your face. You haven't aged a fucking day. Honestly, actually, now that you say that, you look very much. You don't look like you're all that. The computer's older frozen, so I'm going to use that. Yeah, computer's frozen. I'm going to oh. check that the camera's still recording. Una momento. That sounds that's perfect. I'll just sit here and float around. This is a brief intermission for everybody listening. Go, you can tune into the Atlantis King on his YouTube channel, which I don't know where that is, so you can find it on YouTube. Uh, probably in the links in the description. Am I unfrozen, Mr. Tyler? You are, and I have 24% of the battery left. Sweet. I, uh, I, I used this brief intermission to plug your YouTube channel. Oh, gracias. Yeah. <laughs> Escape into isolation, barefoot captain. But, well, yeah. That one? Uh, all the links, all the links in the description. I don't know. Just, we'll, we'll we'll put some things there for people to find. Yeah. All I think, of them. I think seeing seeing your exactly. Yeah. And I mean, my website, I think there's a hello. Yes. What's that? I missed it. I didn't get it. My website, hello yes dot com dot au. Hello yes dot com dot au. All right. We'll put that <clears> in there as well. Everything will be, I think there's a few, for people who are just tuning in, they don't know anything about you, yeah. or even if they okay. do and they want to just tune in, there's a few mm. things specifically that I personally recommend, uh, mm. which is one, this one's for the kids' potential realities. That one was mm. great. And then mm. two is the Spirit Science 14, Insights of Ascension. And mm -hmm. then any other things, probably your boat series and anything else like your website is just the cherry on top, icing on the cake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, constant creativity. I made a 10 minute video called Word Music, which is one of the ones I'm most proud about. But um, is that yeah, the one where you went for the a walk? King Files. No, that was the beach one. Word Music is, I think, one of the longest ones there. And okay. it's talk about all, I pulled from all these different areas Buddha, Thoth, Nietzsche, you know, just whoever was interesting. And I just put them all together. And at the end of the video, we realized that words are just music, they don't yeah. mean much at all. Unless we make them mean things. They're just noises, yeah. though, at the end of the day. <laughs> ah, <laughs> this is my even, problem, Jordan. I crack myself up so much, people just think I'm insane. <laughs> even when not in character, <laughs> you are quite a character. Yes, but I can drop the character. I'm not just a character. Should we, should we drop our characters? Well, your your character is quite a, it's like part of your personality. 
I mean, I, you can you can just tune which part of your personality you're choosing to express, right? Uh, adapt. We must adapt. I entertain myself because quite often not everyone else is entertaining. I can only entertain myself if I have two perspectives. If I have a straight man and my normal self. So when I look at my crazy self from my straight man, that's just so funny. <laughs> when I flip it, look at my straight self from my crazy guy, I go, oh, maybe I better put my pants back on. <laughs> <laughs> and so persona, we think personality is us and it's what we animate. But persona, literally the word, means mask. From ancient Greeks, it was the mask that makes a noise. It was a mask that had a big funnel in it like that. And it was so the auditorium could hear you speak. And you could take that mask off, and that was your persona. But now, we've all just got this hot glue and just stuck these personas on, and, and we're not allowed to change, apparently. I wonder what that's all about. That's really true, actually. I, I, I was talking to another uh, friend about that recently, of like, mm. if we could recognize that there, like, you know, from the, all the research of, like, thoughts and feelings and consciousness exist beyond our body, you know, like a morphogenic field, you can see that your ego then is just a collection of programs that are running. And that if you can separate your sense of self from those programs, then you become the possibility of becoming anything. And you can mm -hmm. rewrite the programs to be however it is that you mm -hmm. want them to be. You can become new personalities. Through hypnotism. New new potential realities to explore and experience and it's all it all comes down to the choice to let go of what you identify as because the moment you say i am this way i only eat this food or i only like these kinds of shows or i only do this on my weekends yeah. like you put yeah, yourself yeah. into a box or a bubble and you limit yourself from like well what could you possibly other otherwise experience if you just step out of your comfort mm. zone and mm -hmm. rewrite your egoic programs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so many people hold on to them as vestibules. Vestibules. <laughs> so many Vesti people hold on to them as <laughs> vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> so many people hold on to them as vestibules of identity. Yeah. Do you feel this? Where they go, no, I can't. I, I can't do that. I'm not that type of person. I have this type of pain. And um, I've seen people on stage release pain that they've been holding for years and realizing that it was just created by themselves so that they had something to complain about or you know draw attention to themselves and we're not saying that people are doing this consciously these are unconscious programs they don't make sense once you bring them into light and when you bring them into light that's when they dissolve away so this lady she always had this back pain and she was like oh and she was hypnotized and she was lying on the floor and um the hypnotist was twisting uh, the back of her hand like this and it looks dangerous, but it's, it's actually really it doesn't hurt at all. And he was using that feeling of twisting her hand to create anesthesia. And it went all the way down her arm and into her back. And then she released the pain. And then she started crying. And then I said, I'm going to do hypnotism. <laughs> That's how Because if we can have that amount of consciousness to choose how we want to be and then to allow our unconscious processes to support that, it's like we've got a whole team of support and when it's just us. Isn't it amazing what we can do when we actually like consciously intend to make changes within us sort of thing? It's like you have all the powers of God at your fingertips and mm -hmm. we behave as if we're, you know, like isolated, limited, uncreative, unconscious little beings, you know, in, in so much of life, like we, we go through life feeling mostly because of these subconscious programs from the world around us like no you can't do that no you mm. can't do that you have mm. to conform to this identity and then we grow up and think that that's true mm. and that we make a life for ourselves that yeah. is filled with suffering and then we wonder why are we always in pain it's like well because you're a conscious creator that is you have all the power of the universe within you and you're like forcing it through a teeny wee little pinhole I'm trying to understand mm. like mm -hmm. it's like you have to be able to expand that pinhole to a black hole that's really big and creating yeah. a galaxy of creative wonder around you. Mm -hmm. And then come back into your monkey body and do the dishes. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. It's really fucking it funny. Is. Here we are, gods <laughs> in bodies. Having a scrub fucking things. 
<laughs> I think maybe, I mean, maybe on some level, this is like our karma for existing in the physical body is like being physical mm -hmm. comes with a tremendous amount of like blessings that we can experience that non-physical beings can't. However, it also comes with all these responsibilities that you, you have to take care of yourself and the world around you in order to level mm. up inside of this game. So if we want to become, mm. you know, ascended masters, you know, like just light bodies radiating with energy and being able to move mm. through time and space like Thoth or Jesus or whatever, like in order to do that, you've got to chop the wood and carry the water when you're physical in order mm. to learn the mm. what you need to learn in order to get to that next level, that ascension level. Like you have to master mm. the physical domain in order to move your physical body into a non-physical location. Mm. Mm. Something I noticed, Jordan, was, I love what you're saying, by the way, loving it so hard, is that, remember how we kept talking about the spiral energy? We'd be starting from somewhere, and then we'd be moving, going side, traveling all the way up, and then we come back to the same fucking spot that we were in before. And it just takes that awareness to realize it's the same spot, but on a higher level. And we've re-encountered this energy for some reason. We either have solved it, and now it's an opportunity to practice that for something else, or we haven't solved it. And this is the time where it comes around, and we get to realize that there's more work to be done here. That's a nice sound. <laughs> yeah. uh, when you said spiral energy, it just r mm. reminded me, like, did you watch our... Uh... Hidden Spirit Gurren Lagann. Gurren Lagann, yeah. Um, I don't think I've watched any of the Hidden Spirit trial of the movies because that's all I do all the time anyway. I'm watching Batman, I'm like, ah! Just like thinking about all these cultures. What's the most poetic thing that that could mean in that moment right now? So I'm totally in, in vibe with that. Maybe I'll make a couple with you, but I think I'm going to watch one today, actually. Gurren Lagann, let's do it. I'm going to watch it today. Oh, okay, yeah. See, I mean, that's, no, I mean, I'm excited because that was like, we watched that together on the road trip uh, and it was just like the best time. It was such a fun experience to share together. So synergistic as well, the stuff that they were talking about. And the two characters that were so similar to you and me, where I'm just like, blind optimism. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then you, that and then you left. <clears throat> then so left. it was literally, it was literally like, uh, spoiler alert for people watching, but it was literally like what happens to Kamina uh, in mm. a different way. Yeah. Mm. It was wild. Mm. It was so wild. It was really, it was very synchronous though. It was a really fun experience. So either way, thank you. If you end up watching it, I, I'd love to hear what you think about it. <laughs> I'm so fuckers. Yeah. I'll write on the Facebook page, shall I? Where's the daily connection with Jay Dizalat? That's you. <laughs> Sorry, what, what are you asking? Where, where am I posting? Where am I existing on the internet? I was kind of asking, where can I get a hold of you? And then anyone that's listening to this would be like, oh, I'm going to get a hold of him there as well. And then I thought, maybe it's not so good and I shouldn't say that. So I said Facebook. <laughs> because you don't want to give everyone your personal email. But here we are now. Everyone understands. I mean, I can, send you, I, I can send you my email. We can get each other on text. We can do Instagram Ooh. as we've been doing. I mean, whatever, man. Facebook is still a thing. I still have one of those for now. Um, yeah, still living for now, isn't it? But in like two years, everyone's just going to have a TikTok <laughs> account. Oh, and then the no, entire world's no, going to no. be like, look what I can do. Look what I can do. Look what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, man. TikTok is getting banned. Uh, the the truth oh. about its origin as a Chinese spying tool is starting to come out. Oh, you know hey, what, my battery you know just what, stopped. Yeah, yeah, change it. This is perfect time. Be right back. That, yeah, that last 20 seconds went really quickly. Or not 20 seconds. <laughs> well, yeah, if it was 20 seconds. No, that last 24%. Um, uh, That's right. What should I say in this void space? We're floating through the universe, closing our eyes and into a meditation of trance-like euphoric bliss, where every passing moment, every breath is recognized as a continuum of realization that you are a part of everything. And in that, you understand that everything is also a part of you. And we're back. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, yeah, I created I created a meditation while you were gone. <laughs> mm. um, I want to do that. I want to have a bunch of short videos where any time that you have an opportunity to wait, say putting on the kettle, say pulling up to a bus stand, any time that it's like oh, time to wait, people usually flip out their phone first thing. There's going to be a kaleidoscope of energy come over the screen. And then just breathing and one of my meditations will start maybe like a little piece of it. And then you just be like, ah, and realize that in those moments that we wait, 
That's the moment that we can get in touch with the divine and be so closely linked to the pure universal energy that put us here in the first place. You know, no unconscious moments. Mm. Um, unconscious is a bit of a strange word to use there because I used it before to mean the subconscious processes. Unconscious meaning completely devoid of consciousness. None of those moments. I'm going to copy your... Unless the, unless the, <laughs> um, unless, uh, unless in your unconscious state, you are tuning into a much greater, more expansive, all encompassing consciousness. Ah, like in a coma? Yeah, well, maybe because some, some people have very transcend, <laughs> some people have very transcendental comas. Yeah. See, that's it, John. Look at many topics we've, we've gone over through today. Wouldn't it be amazing? to go to the top scientists in each of these industries and just be like, tell us what's the biggest problem in your industry? How could we solve that problem together? And then for them to be like, oh, I'm a scientist. Doing, this is what a scientist does. This is how they work. And he's doing his scientist stuff, all her stuff. And <laughs> then we come along and say, hey, we have like 100,000 people that could come and help do something towards this goal of making the planet better to serve our karma because of how much we've hurt the world with all of our polluting. Let's do something together. What's something that we can do en masse? Just the simple habit of learning. It could be enough if it's the right topic. You know, just the, the right understanding of where recycling goes, for instance. I think that's so valuable, getting that information out. And it's true. I mean, the, the, just the thinking, like getting the mass consciousness, thinking about a thing will progress the idea forward and help uh, create a solution and especially if they're mm. tangible physical solutions I think the challenge is that there's a lot of sciences or scientific institutions that are doing research and work that is um, you know it's like they're paid by a medical company to experiment on some tiny little molecule and how it affects with other molecules in the body and this and that mm. and like is really you know not something that you, the, the masses might be interested in, I guess. But then again, mm. I mean, it maybe just requires opening up the conversation and seeing. Uh, but it, yeah, it really probably depends on the situation. But ultimately, I do like mm. the idea of like where you're going with that. I mean, it just I mm. feel like it, it also if 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 we wanted people to participate, you, you require a system to be able to support them in doing so. Otherwise, it's just like mm. throwing information at mm. a person and being like, this is too much. This is ridiculous. I can't even you know, yeah. there's too many too many voices kind of thing. There's no process mm. for it to be filtered mm. into an actionable item and, and quality results. Whereas you have a mystery school. Yes, I do. Mm, and, which is a much and, better scaffold. And part of our plan with the mystery school is actually to build a scientific laboratory to do these kinds of experiments, but have a spiritual science mixed in because we need more spirit science. We do. It's still <laughs> such a beautiful name. It's um, basically like how I want to do learning adventures. It's the same thing. It's bringing the physical and the immaterial into the same space within us. I love it. Yeah. I love are you, you and what you're creating. <laughs> are you still doing Quest Ions? See, I was. Quest Ions is going to be the next adventures of Captain Quest, and it's basically the same thing, learning adventures. However, um, I've decided to, as you have, um, meld my time with others. And so it's not all about me doing my thing, which you know, is what it is. It's about all of us doing what we can do together. I'm not going to succeed in any of my goals if I try and do them all independently of everyone. If I go me and my thing, then everyone's like, all right, you go and do your thing. But if I go us and our thing, then there, we're there together creating something that is um, special to each of us for each of our own reasons. It's not like I'm telling anyone how to think. It's just I'm here being who can share these things with you and realizing that we're both the same thing. Does that make sense? Working with people rather than just trying to work, do it all on my own. Yeah. No, I that's think that's, phase. that's, I mean, that's, that's the future. I'm, I mean, like I had to learn that over and over until I figured it out how to do it. Cause <laughs> yeah. there was a piece of this of like how to do it when working with others, having some processes, having some systems mm. and stuff. But I mean, that was the bottom line was that, there's no way that I could get where I wanted to go without working with a team. And then how do you scale that team? And how do you maintain um, that heart-centered intention mm. as you grow bigger and bigger? And that's sort of been the thing that I've been continually learning.
So I I completely get it, man. Yeah. That's that's really that's really special. Hmm. I love seeing how much growth you've done, but still retaining that inner heart connection. You're still creating for what purpose, Jordan? To change the world. Um, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, I mean, like, it, it's actually very interesting because I've had this comment and a lot of people have been criticizing me, especially since making the money series is like, there's a lot of that, like you've sold out kind of thing. And my original intention with spirit science was if the whole world knew about this stuff, the world would change very quickly. And I genuinely believe mm. that. And I still believe that. And I, I think like the, the, the challenge that I ran into was this like, if I do it all myself, then I have to stay at this level. But I really want to be create. I want to make that pyramid center. You know, I want to make the the ocean city, the floating ocean city, one day. Like there's these dreams and things that I want to hit, and I have to step yeah. up my game to do that. So the money series and yeah. that kind of thing was really like, how do I integrate mm. my physical or my spiritual will and my 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 heart and my my love and all this into mm the world that we currently have. And, yeah. and, and, and I genuinely feel like through the work that I'm, that I'm doing and that, we, that my team, like the Spirit Studios team is doing and all the support that we have from people that we're collaborating with um, is, is really on track to support. It's, it's like the bottom line is the support of the evolution of consciousness and seeing the world mm. move into a, a higher age of love and light and truth mm. and authenticity mm. and that's mm. really the, the the bottom line goal is like can we or how do we or let's let's do you know um taking like just just giving people tools resources uh information support in whatever way that we can mm. to 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 make to to empower people to become powerful changes in the world, really. Mm. Yeah. Help yeah, people liberate up. themselves. Yeah. Help mm. people liberate themselves through through higher consciousness, recognizing mm. that we are facilitating our collective awareness and our, our collective lifestyle together through mm. this sort of shared consciousness field. And if each of us, mm. as like nodes in that field, can become, you know, can harmonize and heal our own stuff mm. we make a space for mm. others to do that same work and we all elevate together absolutely here yeah. here divine well divine well, and sir. To, thank you and to everyone doing this work because i know that it's not just me as well like you know even whether it's on the team or off like there's so many people out there in the world now um that i'm watching and tuning into who are really i feel doing really good work really sp like and i just i want to see that continue you know i, I want to support those who are doing good work you yourself are uh one really good example of this man like i really want to see you succeed because if the, the the better you do then the more light comes into the world you know and so it's it becomes this like mutual game it's like i don't it doesn't matter about who has more followers likes money whatever right like mm. none of that really comes into play it's like are you winning and can i help you win more you know and can we mm. help each other grow and and evolve mm. because that's really what it's all about and each of us have a part to play yeah are you more what you wanted to be than yesterday mm. yeah. yeah winning hey winning implies a loser mm. well i think the I, past I, self <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. What did, sorry, what did you just say? I missed it. The past self can be the loser because he's in the past. We don't need him. Anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I was, I was going to try and somehow relate that to like you, if you're, if you're unconsciously living in your suffering, blaming the rest of the world mm. for everything that's ever happened mm. and never creating any change within yeah. yourself, that could be identified yeah. as losing, but it also could be identified as sleeping. So you know, maybe winning was not the right, maybe, maybe winning was not the right word to use. <laughs> oh, it makes That's sense. Fair. I got That's your fair. drift. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are you, are you, and actually this is a very interesting thing. You know, we, we often talk about, and you, you and I even discussed at the very beginning, this idea mm. of, um, like talking about happiness and talking about love and everything is happy mm. and love and light and everything like that. Mm. I recently came across, um, 
a podcast, I think it was with Jordan Peterson, and he was talking mm. about like, why is it that we're so attached to happiness as the ultimate goal of life? Because some people might argue mm. that happiness is not the be all end all thing that we should be striving for, like greatness or uh, sort of tra you know transcendental um, yeah. creating, like y you might argue like, what's what's more valuable to society? Someone who, you know, basically spends their lives striving to make life better for everybody. Maybe they're not having the happiest life, but they're providing so much service and so much value that they've created massive change mm. in the world mm. and are ultimately the mm. world is better for it or someone mm. being happy. And you might argue that like it's this is a, a better path for society. So it's like, why are we so attached to just being happy? What if instead we strove for something else? What if we strove for greatness? Mm. What if we strove mm. for being an instrument of change and healing for the world? And that was, I was a really moving, just a moving mm. line. I was like, yeah, no, that's, I mean, we are very addicted to the idea of happiness. And even like looking at those like Instagram influencers mm. and everything like that, there's so many people always putting out like, look at how great my oh. life is, la la la, right? And it, it's, it's like this, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's like, if that's the, the, the mindset, um, I mean, we, 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 everyone's trying to have that illusion, but it's not even real because mm. those people who are putting that out there, they're not like that all the time. They're just like it when they're on camera and otherwise they're like just yes. living their lives. Yeah. And so we have this very skewed perspective of what life is supposed yeah. to look like. And we need, I, I don't know, more perspectives, mm. more voices, more demonstrations of what it actually looks like to be truthful, mm. loving and authentic. Mm. So that you can know it when you recognize it. Because you and me going out, taking photos of ourselves and like showing people the journey that we're on was really important, special for us for a special reason. Uh, if that reason, its highest special purpose is to increase my likes, then what the fuck are you doing? Like, For what purpose are you <laughs> increasing likes? And yeah, if it is to transfer into money, then maybe just go and get a job. <laughs> I would like to recant that last thing that I said because just going and getting a job could to so many people feel like, you know, losing, giving up and the rest of it in this realm where we can create whatever we want if the time is right, if the right people are around us, if it's the right context, like socially for us to be in that, that role, we could be too young, too old, the rest of it. We could have all these excuses that enforce those ideas. But what we're doing at the essence of it is learning about each other. And so you and me, we started doing this stuff first, bringing people on our adventures, but it doesn't mean we're in any different spot than anyone starting now. I would love to see someone's useful, youthful passion as it's go, I'm going to go and do and be in life and fantasticness. I've actually seen it in um, a couple of um, grammars and stuff like that. It's more like the younger kids, just like us, we're getting into the internet world and we're just like, blown away by the opportunity and the resources and just the people that are out there constantly connecting with you supporting your dream and your goal and you're just like that's fucking amazing but then it's not sus sustainable unless you keep on producing that quality of content that they like mm. and so you've got to have that base of yourself you've got to have your family you've got to have your community you've got to have that main operating principle of home so that you can go out and bring back I won't say the bacon because I'm vegetarian, but <laughs> bring back the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> How are you bringing home nuts this week, Jordan? Sorry, say that one more time. How are you bringing home the nuts this week, Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm recording this podcast with you, man. I like it. Yeah, thank you. There's been a lot of it's, it's been, been a lot of podcasts lately and uh yeah you're the you're technically also the first it's a fun little continuum where i've recorded some others but you're also the first it's just sort of like a special I debut like special debut episode if you um, don't put me first i'm gonna come and find you with a tranquilizer full of what's the stuff that makes you poo <laughs> <laughs> laxative 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 tranquilizer gun i'll come at you i'll find you <laughs> um yeah <laughs> There's, All jokes aside, I mean, I'm gonna come and see you soon when flights happen. I hope so. Um, so uh, for the rest of your, uh, I mean, 
Shoot. I was going to say for the rest of your COVID, what are you up to? But I, we don't know how long that'll be. <laughs> so that's, that'll be a big, that's a loaded no, question. No, we don't, do we? No. What a time to be alive. Um, yeah. So the rest of, ooh, no, it looks like coming into, yeah, I've got one month um, to prepare and plan. And then the next month we're renting out this warehouse for a micro reality workshop series where um, a lady from Deloitte, she's one of the production managers from there. She just lost her job. So instead she's doing a bunch of workshops on how the mycelium of mushrooms is everything. Basically it's like where the gray matter of the earth just like makes its connections and it's also in space and all this stuff i can't wait to actually do the course so that i know more about it but i know that she's very advanced in all the mushrooms and understanding all that stuff um she got us some shiitake mushroom that steaks i've never even i didn't even know it was possible i'm gonna try them out soon shiitake mushroom steaks so i'm preparing for all of that um this last month we're getting everything in the warehouse finally polished and looking tasty with lots of lovely plants everywhere and then we can start utilizing this warehouse as a production space for people to come and make their dreams into reality. So I can support people that were similar to me back in the day and they just, I have a dream and a vision, but I don't have all the other shit. Now I have all the other shit, so I can use it for myself, <laughs> but I can also share and help and assist the new generation of people coming through and doing this stuff as well. Except man, in Australia, there's not as many people as in America that are on this, um, on this, self-enlightened path i think in america because there's so many people you almost can be who you want to be but in australia it's more small towns and so if anyone extends themselves and says look how amazing i could be we actually have a term for it it's called tall poppy syndrome if anyone extends themselves we cut them down and so it's kind of why i had to get out of the country to be the king of atlantis <laughs> it's really interesting like uh because we're you know, a country founded on criminals and then yeah as soon as anyone extends himself i remember them telling us in school they're like right children there's something called tall poppy syndrome and if any of you excel in any way everyone else is gonna cut you down and i was gobsmacked i like kept asking questions the teacher was like why would they do that like oh it's just something that happens i'm like just something that happens i want to be in love and connection with my brothers and sisters don't tell me that a vitriolic meme is going to take away all of my friends as soon as i start becoming something mrs buttersworth i didn't have a teacher called me mrs buttersworth wow. i made it fantastic I'm just for you but have you heard that term before Talk no about? and you have mm? just you've blown my mind really six ways from sunday because that is i've never i've never heard that and I mean, that, look, that happens regardless, I feel. But that the, fa that the fact that you actually have a term for it and yeah. it's like acknowledged at, along mm. society, it's like this is how things are. I mean, how deep in the matrix it goes can further. you be? Dude, it goes further. Okay, get this. The poppy, apart from being heroin, may I just add, <laughs> the poppy seeds, opium, whatever. Um, apart from that, poppies are what Australians wear when we are commemorating the battle of gallipoli where australians came out and fought in turkey we have a we have a remembrance day we have the same thing like wearing poppy poppy flowers or, or yeah mm. i think so, i think so it is poppy flowers i th i'm pretty See, there's sure all these traditions that we're red, so uncoupled from i mean red flowers red white yeah black center yeah yeah, well, yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah it's the same there we go ah you use it too fantastic well yeah so the symbol of our gallipoli like it means so many things for australians it's so difficult we we're in the wrong position we had no help with the rest of it and then it was all an uphill battle so the people in gallipoli were just shooting down on them so it's treated as this massacre you know it was really horrible and we're in someone else's land of course uh very convoluted but then there's this one day that everyone took a break in the war they cleaned up the dead they like cleaned the battlefield was it christmas day or something like that everyone's like let's not fight today and they didn't they just went and played soccer the germans and the turks and the australians like hey let's just have a fun day and then the next day they went back to killing each other and we used the poppy as a celebration of that time when we were all together and we realize that we don't need to fight each other and we are just one and we're just fulfilling the needs and desires of a military industrial complex that has needs and desires other than your own and will trickle down its wealth and resources to you if you are the lucky few that get a hold of it and so what a strange symbol to use a poppy 
when we have the term tall poppy syndrome. I'm seeing now that the tall poppy could be seen as the generals and the commanders that choose other people to go and do things while being safe themselves. So maybe being a tall poppy is being one of those guys that, yeah, exceeds himself and isn't one of the crowd, isn't one of the people that can see themselves in another. Huh. If you think you are higher than other people, then I could see why people would want to cut you down. Huh. Full circle. <laughs> we've, we've done this about <laughs> Dude, I don't even I don't even know what to say <clears throat> to all of this. Um, mm. But it's, I guess, par for the course for the human race, honestly. <laughs> um, which is very which is which is disappointing. I mean, mm. what's going to have to happen to create a shift of awareness in this regard? Well, I thought it would be something like aliens or a pandemic, where we all come have to come together because we realize the one thing that unites us all, and that's our mortality. I feel like the it, pandemic is bringing people pretty far apart, though, unfortunately. That is true. But also, I mean, yeah. it's bringing people apart because the, the fear and the, the danger, the pure danger of the experience is making people go, holy shit. And, um, of course, all the other things are getting inflamed. But at the end of it, coming out of it, we're all going to look back at this time and say, we were in that together. There was no one that was safe from the pandemic. You know, we all just did our best and then a bunch of us didn't do well enough, which is why it kept on rising up. And a bunch of us used it for um, fodder to feed their own machine, their own um, angle, their own drive. And most of us just tried to get through it and just tried to love each other a lot and just got back to our families and realized that our families mostly are just like two people and a baby in a studio apartment. That's not a fucking community. A community is hundreds of people. You've got heaps of dads, heaps of mums, heaps of friends. Everyone raises you. You're in the witnessed eyes of everyone around you. You become a person because you're surrounded by people, not fucking television. And yet we are digital creators. <laughs> we, we don't have a choice. It's like... It's like everyone's on, the, everyone's on the internet more than ever right now. It's probably a good time to make some content. People are looking for things to watch. And if we don't, I mean, the thing is, is like for anybody out there who makes content, who might have like a good message behind it, that it's not just entertainment. Uh, now's a really good time to, to be a content creator because everyone's looking for something anyways. And if you have the opportunity to create some enlightenment in that time, I mean... Mm. Maybe it's a good time to sort of stand up and be a tall poppy. Just not in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> or to do it That's to so do funny. it in to do it in private in Australia where no one knows that it's you. If it's online. Or just don't care. That's, That's your secret. Well. I think you do that really mm. well. Too well in the past. People are like, You don't care about me. I'm like, I don't care about anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Because it wasn't true, but you know. For but you do care, Tyler. You do care. You exactly. care in your own. That's you why just, you, I you do all this stuff. Just in your do you know own how much? way. Absolutely, I've got to care in a way that I can enjoy caring. Otherwise, there's no point. Um, because if I have a horrible life, caring about all these things, I'm just giving away my energy and not giving myself the ability to actually make any change, actually make anybody's life actually better. Because yeah. caring for people, I mean. That's a that's a whole nother conversation. I was going to go into hospitalized care and like end of life care, and then caring for people like um, my brother who's in a wheelchair, or caring, you know, people care, and then there's people that get paid to care, and there's whole different spectrums. I forgot what I was going to talk about, but that's all right. I really learned that just even just over my just this spiritual journey for the last you know nine years mm. of spirit science has been mm. learning about the different levels that you can show up for a person and. Um, you know, yeah. originally I was like, I make videos and that helps people and that's my comfort mm. zone and that's where I stop. And it was like yeah. just more and more lessons about like, no, you can be there for someone emotionally. You can be there for someone mm. through having conversations, through, you know, giving gifts, through, you know, different. Yeah, exactly as you're describing, like different mm. forms of care, mm. the different love languages like videos and content is one way of doing that. Spirit mm. Mysteries is another way of doing that because there's more like one-on-one -on -one, like we, and, and sometimes it's not even, 
that you have to be the one to do it. It can be you facilitating. Like inside of Spirit mm-hmm. Mysteries, we actually just brought on a psychologist to do one-on-one sessions with people. So like a part yeah. of your membership, you actually get one-on-one membership so to work with. Like you can have, so you can work with a person. You can work with a psychologist. Mm-hmm. It's just a built-in. And um, I mean, yeah, it's just like that. I, I'm not doing that one-on-one work. I, I have such a full mm-hmm. schedule. It's just, it doesn't mm-hmm. really fit for me. And I'm also not... For as sure. professionally trained, but I can facilitate a space where other people can get that support by finding mm. other people and bringing people together. So there's, you can even be in support just by helping introduce people and creating a space for magic to happen. You don't have to do every little thing. And I think that's something that, I don't know, that was really impactful to, for me to learn that and to, to mm. find myself in that space, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Coming back to that question of how do we know that we care? Because there are so many different levels of it and so many people use it for nefarious or otherwise purposes. We go, oh, I did this for you. You need to do that for me and that type of stuff. But I know that I care because, first of all, I can't stop thinking about how to help people through the power of film and media. I'm always writing ideas and skits down that, you know, through some sort of joke, realize the the context and the state of all of this, but I know that I care because I've been inside working on these hypnotism scripts that are in the meditations and I look outside and it's beautiful and it's an amazing day and there's probably people down the beach having an amazing time and I get a little bit jealous and I'm like, all those people out there not trying to help their fellow brothers and sisters are just getting drunk and doing drugs and having sex with beautiful people (laughs) and it sounds fun, but here I am on the computer And then I stayed on the computer because I fucking care about what I'm doing and about what it's going to create. And I care about getting to the end of my life, looking back and saying, I fucking tried to help. (laughs) You know, I'm here together with these people doing this life. I contributed to what I thought was necessary and to what I thought made a good life. And hopefully that's inspired at least one other person. Yeah. I think you touched on something really special there too, which was, the, the personal sacrifice of doing good work or just mm. doing work in general, right? Mm. Because it's a lot easier mm. to spend all of your free time just chilling on the couch, eating popcorn, mm. getting high, getting mm. drunk, whatever it is, right? Mm. Um, and, and, and certainly there's a time and a place for all of that. Like we should, you should be able to rest however, however you like. And if it's like you've mm. worked your ass off for a few weeks and you need a break, you know, have a drink, go sit on the beach, enjoy mm. yourself, right? Like, no, of course, you mm. know, but, but it's like, if that's what you do all the time, there's, not, I mean, it's just like, you miss out on that opportunity to really give of yourself and, and provide service to the world. Mm. And, um, engage. I mean, that's, I, engage, yeah, with like, what are you really passionate mm. about? And maybe people who do that kind of have that kind of lifestyle, just don't have that passion to engage with. They haven't gone within to find out what it is yeah. that they're really passionate about. And they're not willing to be a tall yeah. poppy to step out and do something different from the crowd. Mm. Mm. But yeah, but man, I think that you, we've, we've really explored some amazing, amazing things here today. And I fucking so love you. This has been so good. And I think we're going to bring love this. You, Jordan. I love you too. I think we're going to bring this to a close here for today, but like we definitely, should do this again in the future because I really enjoy talking to you. And I really think that, I mean, I just like really appreciate how effortlessly we can flow from conversation Mm. to, you know, subject to subject. It's just, it's like a beautiful continuum. And there, honestly, there's a lot more to get into, but uh, you Mm. just, I mean, I'm going into late on a Friday night here and you're just starting your Saturday morning. So I want you to have like a beautiful week, (laughs) beautiful weekend ahead of you. And, uh, Oh, I will. Yeah. So for anybody who's listening, I mean, how would people find, I mean, besides the fact that all the links are going to be right down in the description, how, how would people find you and tune in if they want to? So first of all, people can find me right now on hashtag escape into isolation, which is also found on the barefoot captains, YouTube. Um, that's the sailing trip that we've just done. And there's a few years previous there as well. It's a docu reality. It's all about how to get through breaking things and navigating weather. And um, there's a bit of David Attenborough vibes in there as well. That's a project doing for someone else. My project is called Hello Yes. And it's going to be helloyes.com.au. 
And that's going to be all about creating people's dreams. So there's going to be basically no limits to it. I'm going to be using it to create content for all you lovely people out there. There's a bunch of ideas. Don't even worry about it. It's all going to be coming out. There's going to be so much gooey information. It's all going to be fantastic. And there's going to be a live element to it. So once a month, we're going to have the festival where we meet up and we actually activate all of the stuff that we've been doing for the month previous online. So we'll have workshops here where people can come online as well. I'm really interested in holding men's workshops and co-ed gender workshops. You don't see many of them, but I think that would be worth having as well. And then we go to the festivals, we take those learnings and the, the valuable things and the people to those festivals, and we can really up-level our understanding of who we are every month, just again and again and again. So that's where you can find Are you going to do another watery mecca? Why not? Actually, <laughs> John, uh, watery mecca was a water sled, right? Every yeah. Saturday from October now, I run a fucking boat festival, which is way better than a water... Well, it is a water watering mecca. still good and different. Yeah, yeah I should is. put a water slide at the boat festival. That's what I yes. should Yes, yes. People, okay, well, do, I've definitely, people take drugs there. It's like crazy. I definitely have to come and visit. <laughs> well, okay, listen, next time, hey. next time we start this, uh, the next podcast, because you're definitely coming back, yeah. uh, or maybe I'll come definitely. on yours. We're going to start with the, yes. if, if we remember, we're going to start with the conversation. Do you remember that time that we took a whole bunch of like peyote cactus and then walked to the beach? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll leave that. I do I remember. Mean, and, and it's really funny yeah, we'll because, leave that. because we're just, leave we just had the whole, we just had this whole conversation about like, just like not going to the beach and taking drugs all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, remember ah. that time we and That's did how we that? started. <laughs> Oh, but that was i mean we only did it once though i and love the we got paradox. A lot of work done <laughs> oh that was a good day mm. it was a good day and we got a lot from it but we had the community to share and engage and talk about these things that we learned that's that's what we need it's what we're both providing and i love you so much for being an angel of this jordan of learning of adventure and learning you really are being an angel right now god love you I love you so much, Tyler. Thank you for joining me on this very special episode one of Spirit Science Live. Episode one. I'll see you for next time. Or you'll be on mine. Mwah. 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 Peace Mwah. and blessings. Oh, Sadu to you, sir. <laughs> have you Sadu. played Sadu at all? Sa I have not played Sadu since I saw you last. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I've been playing it mostly with kids, though. Kids want to play Sadu, not adults. Well, so I do to you, sir, and all my love and all my blessings. Namaste, Your blessing. brother. Namaste, stay healthy. <laughs> nah, my goal. I'm <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm going to stay healthy. Nah. <laughs> all right, man. Peace.